Miss Adira Ashet Samuel. Okay. Adira holds a BS in nutrition and food science and a Master of Arts in teaching. She's been an educator for over 13 years with a passion to make learning fun for children of all ages. She has homeschooled her three sons since birth as part of her family daycare and homeschool co-op. As a community educator, Adira has taught workshops at schools and libraries, encouraging healthy nutrition for the entire family. She continues to homeschool while teaching specialty classes at E.L. Haynes Public Charter School, providing science instruction to elementary and middle school students. She also serves as an adult literacy educator at the UDC Community College. Please welcome Mama Adira. <laughs> How wanna do? Uh, How wanna do? Middle? You hear one person answer me. <laughs> what happened to the rest of us? Uh, yeah, I understand what you say. Mm -mm. Well, <laughs> me guess me have to tell on how things go at yard. Okay. On already? Yes. Yeah. All right. So we are going to start now with our presentation on Jamaica. Jamaica, the third largest island in the Caribbean. On already, on the shore, on already. All right. <laughs> Let me back up the slide here. Everybody have them handouts? Yes. So the presentation this morning is on enjoying, enjoying Jamaica's jewels. Because Jamaica is an island that is rich in plenty of jewels. And so we're going to highlight a few of them this morning. Make sure you take good notes. Make sure you stay awake. As a matter of fact, we have prize for all who can answer some questions at the end of the presentation. So make sure to stay awake and pay attention. All right. So Jamaica's jewels. First of all, for those of you who don't know, yes, I've been here in, in, in the States for quite some time. Some people call me a Jamaican. I was born on the island in the wonderful year of 1971. And I came here when I was very small, very small. And my parents did as much as they could. We would go back every now and then for vacations, birthdays, whatever occasions. And so it was always a good opportunity for me to reconnect with my roots and with my people. So I'm going to share just some of the jewels that this beautiful island possesses. Now, your handouts, you'll notice, this size is a little small. I will forward the the PowerPoint to you, but make sure you just follow along. And of course, you can take some notes. So the first jewel that I want to point out about this beautiful island of Jamaica is the landscape. The landscape of Jamaica is absolutely beautiful. Tourists go there just for photography, videography, shooting all kinds of movie scenes. Anybody remember the, the movie Blue Lagoon? Oh, yes. Shot at filmed in, in Jamaica. So. Jamaica, as I said, is the third largest island in the Caribbean, and it is part of what we call the Greater Antilles. It is just south of Cuba, west of Haiti and the Dominican Republic, Hispaniola. And as you go further down the line, then you have the island that we call the Lesser Antilles. Jamaica is about the size of Connecticut, the state of Connecticut, in terms of um, you know miles and square miles. So it's a pretty significant space in terms of the islands. Now, some things to keep in mind about Jamaica, and this is something that you may want to bring up with your um, campers. Jamaica is, here in the United States, the, the country, America, is broken up into states, and each state has their capital and cities. Jamaica is split, divided into what we call parishes. And these are similar to what we call states. There are 14 parishes ranging throughout the island. And as you can see, they each have their own capital. And again, you'll get the PowerPoint because I know it's very hard to see on the, the, the slides. So for those of you who, who are just curious, so I was actually born in the parish of Trelawney in the capital of Falmouth. My parents, my mother actually, was born in Westmoreland. 
My father's family is from Trelawney. So I'm definitely more familiar with the western side of the island. The eastern side, I have some family in Kingston, um, and we go there periodically, but definitely I'm more familiar with the western side. And as you can see from the, um, the map that's here, so Kingston is the capital of Jamaica, and it's actually considered a parish to itself, but not a very big one. And there's a major airport, there's the Donald Sangster Airport in Kingston International, and then the other international airport is in Martigo Bay, also called Mo Bay. So continuing to talk about the landscape, one of the jewels, again, that Jamaica is known for is the highest mountain peak, which is the Blue Mountains. And it's especially known for the coffee. The coffee beans are known worldwide, and that is one of the major exports. Japan, in particular, is a country that just deals with Blue Mountain coffee. And the mountain peak is 7,402 feet high, and the range of the mountains is about 30 miles. And those are located towards the eastern section of the island. Talking about the rivers, the rivers, there are plenty of rivers in Jamaica, about 150 small and large rivers. The Rio Grande, which literally means big river, is the longest river in the island. Then we also have the Black River, which is the widest. And then the Martha Bray River is another one that is um, in the parish of Trelawney, a pretty long one. And one of the favorite pastimes, definitely more of a tourist attraction, is to go rafting down the river. So this is something that you may want to incorporate into your activities for your campers. And I actually have an example of a typical raft. So you can pay about $60 US. And for two or maybe four people, you can go rafting down one of these rivers. You can stop along the way get some coconut water to drink, stop off and see some of the vendors who may be selling craft items like calabash cups. So these are one of the activities, and I'll pass that around. Rafting down the river, again, Martha Bray, Rio Grande, Black River. One of, again, the beautiful resources, the jewels that you will find on the island of Jamaica. You will also find waterfalls as part of the landscape. Okay, one of the famous waterfalls, which you can actually walk up, I've done it a couple of times myself, Guns River Falls. It's a thousand feet high, and you sometimes some folks are brave enough they can walk up by themselves, but usually, as you see in this picture here, you have a train of people helping each other to go up the, um, the falls. And when you go up, there's um, a little waterway, and then you come on back down, and it's right next to a beach. And the Duns River Falls is located in one of the um, popular tourist areas, Ocho Rios, also known as Ochi, in St. Anne. Then in Jamaica, there are also rainforests and caves. So one of the famous ones, and this is located on the north coast, the Green Grotto Caves. And inside, they will, you will have the scenic aqua marine turquoise water, and again, st stalagmites, all that you would typically, typically find in caves around the world. So this is another um, great um, part of the Jamaican landscape. The rainforest, they actually have um, a special, well, let's say a special ride, but an, an amusement park ride, because there is an amusement park called Mystic Mountains. And one of the hot attractions, the hot rides, is a, a bobsled that will take you through the rainforest. So just as rainforests that are around the world, there's um, a few in on the island and they make up the, the beautiful landscape. And if you ever go to Mystic Mountains, you can ride on the bobsled and go through the rainforest, the canopies, and see all of the wildlife that is there to behold. And of course, we cannot, cannot have a conversation at, at, a, at a talk about Jamaica without mentioning the beautiful beaches. And here's a picture of Yeshaya enjoying the beach, and actually, so what I have listed here are some of the popular spots. The Grill is a famous um, popular beach spot. Ocho Rios, again, Ochi. Port Antonio has some beautiful beaches there. But because the way the island is set up, every parish has a coast. You're right there by the water. So for some people, it's just a matter of getting out of their house and they walk across the street and they're at the beach. 
So beaches are plentiful and opportunities for, to get into the water. This is actually a beach in um, Falmouth called Burwood. And it's like a little community um, beach. Um, for many years it was, it was free. Last, the last thing I heard, they're trying to now charge you know, people to um, go to what was you know, nature's resources, open resources to enjoy the scenery. So the beach is, again, a beautiful part of the landscape of Jamaica. Now, another one of the jewels that we will look at, and again, this is something that we definitely want to focus on in Kids and Culture Camp, the history of Jamaica. It's a country that is very treasured history. There are many national heroes, and we're gonna talk about some of them. So this is definitely one of Jamaica's jewels that we should focus on during Kids and Culture Camp. Okay, so before Columbus, before the, the, the man we know as Christopher Columbus went and did all of his exploring, he actually landed on Jamaica in 1494. There were a group of natives that were there, and they were known as the Taino Indians, and that's T-A-I-N-O. Sometimes the word is interchanged with Arawak, A-R-A-W-A-K, but these were native um, Indians to the island. They actually named the island Zemeka, X-A-Y-M-A-C-A, -A, which literally means the land of wood and water. So the island already had a name, and so then Jamaica derived from this name. And of course, they had their tribes, their gatherings, their whole way of life and their culture. And we're gonna we're gonna come back and watch a little short video on this in a little while. But then again, the colonials came, 1494, Christopher Columbus, and the Spanish really took over and set up shop and took control in 1507. And of course, as the colonials will do, they plundered and brought disease, and so of course the Taino population started to dwindle. The Spanish rule, however, ended in 1655 when the British came and took control. And the British were there, and of course, as <coughs> slavery was going on in the States, slavery was going on also in America, I mean, in Jamaica. So while cotton was king in the States, in the islands, in particular Jamaica, sugarcane was king. And so there were fields and fields, plantations of sugarcane, I'm gonna pass them around. The long stalk, yeah, not, yeah. I have, I have a sharp knife that I think can can um, can cut some. And so slaves were being brought in from West Africa and other parts of the world to work these sugar cane sugar um, sugar cane plantations. In 1807, that is when slavery was actually ab abolished, the slavery trade. But slavery itself was not abolished until 1838. And then we're going to talk about a little, a little bit about some of the um, integral um, happenings that helped to bring about the, the abolishment of slavery. British rule ended on August 6, 1962, and that is when Jamaicans became, Jamaica became an independent nation. And that year, that date is celebrated every year. It's a big to-do if you don't have your ticket before. August, the rates and the, the fares are extremely high because everybody likes to get home to celebrate August 6th, Independence Day. All right, so we cannot talk about history in Jamaica without mentioning the Maroons, who are still in existence today. They have a Maroon town, a few, as a matter of fact, around the island. But one of the famous, um, the pioneers, the leaders in the Maroon community Nanny, Queen Nanny of the Maroons. And the Maroons, so remember we talked about the, the British taking, taking control in 1655. When the British took rule, there was of course that little um, squabble, warring between the Spanish and the British, and some of the slaves took that opportunity to escape. They made their escape, and they fled into the mountains of Jamaica, 
and there they stayed. And no matter how the British tried, years, hundreds of years, to try to bring them into subjugation. So Nanny, Queen Nanny, she was one of the leaders of um, the Maroons who would come down, they would fight against the British, get whatever they need, and go back to the mountains. Um, so they never came again under back onto, under slavery under the British, and they were eventually, the British just got tired of them, they said, look, we're gonna go on. And they said, have your way, and they got their own political autonomy in 1739. And as you can see, again, I mentioned before, um, Jamaica's an island that treasures its history, and we have a few, Nanny, um, Queen Nanny, she's actually the only female national hero. So she is, is you'll see her image um, on the $500 bill. And she's one of others, again, but she's the only female heroine, national hero, and so her memory is remembered. Then another important um, event <coughs> in the history of Jamaica was called the Western Li Liberation Uprising. And this was actually the largest rebellion against slavery. It was held in December of 1831 and led by a slave, Sam Sharp, who just, you know, again, just like there were rebellions going on here in the States, John Brown and all the other, there were rebellions going on all over the world. And so Sam Sharp led a group of slaves to revolt. Unfortunately, they weren't necessarily successful in, in, in that venture. He eventually was, was hanged. About 14 whites were killed. About 500 slaves were, were killed. But again, it was an impetus and an important event in eventually bringing about the abolishment of slavery. All right, another important rebellion, the Morant's Bay Rebellion. And this occurred in 1865. Now by this time, slavery had already been abolished. But what this rebellion was about was basically, now we are free, so it's similar to, to um, here in America where there was the, okay, you're free, you get 40 acres and a mule. Well in Jamaica, they didn't even get the 40 acres and a mule. But they realized, hey look, we can't survive like this. We need more, we need land. And so no matter how they tried to appeal to the queen and the, the ruling British, they were not getting their, um, their needs met. So they led a revolt. Paul Bogle was instrumental in this. And he was also um, working in or close in close ties with a white, um, but actually he was really mixed, George W. Gordon. He was actually the son of a slave owner and a, and a slave. And he was very sympathetic with the cause of the, the, of the freed um, Jamaicans and did what he could. He was a, a member of the um, House of Assembly. He did what he could to, to stand up for the cause for the um, freely, free, newly freed um, Jamaicans. And as a result of his intermingling and his support of Paul Bogle, they were both um, hanged at the end of the Morant Bay um, Rebellion. And it was interesting because Gordon was, uh, this happened in, um, in St. Thomas, he was nowhere near um, the, the rebellion at all, literally when it happened, but they still had a warrant for his arrest, and he was drawn in and again, eventually hung. So Morant Bay Rebellion, another important event in um, Jamaican history. And again, Paul Bogle, considered a national hero. As a matter of fact, they have a dance named after him, the Bogle. Um, and then George W. Gordon is also considered one of Jamaica's national heroes. So this is something that definitely should be focused um, and emphasized in during Kids and Culture Camp. And here's some other pictures of them, Paul Bogle and George W. Gordon. All right, other national heroes, and you will see them on um, some of the money, as a matter of fact, I'm going to pass around some currency. We have Sir Alexander Bustam Bustamante, who was the first Prime Minister of Jamaica. So he took over when Jamaica gained independence in 62, and he formed what is one of the two major political parties in Jamaica, the Jamaican Labor Party, JLP. And the JLP is usually in opposition to the People's National Party, who was founded by Sir Norman Manley, another 
um, again, national hero. And then we also have the Honorable Marcus Garvey. He's also considered a national hero for his work in yes. emphasizing that black people should do better for themselves and repatriate to Africa if at all possible. So again, I'm gonna pass around some of the currency and you can take a look at them. It has changed during the years. So now they, there's certain levels of bills they don't even make it make anymore. They don't make $5 bills, they, they actually have a $5 coin because the currency, the exchange rate is so, is, is so high. And I actually have an exchange rate, I'm, and, and uh, forgive me, but I'm not sure what the exact current, um, exchange rate, and I could look it up real quick before we leave today. But this is a, a bank slip from a time I was there in, in 92, where the exchange rate was one US to 25 um, Jamaican. Yeah, when I was there, and last time I was there was 2010, it was like 86, one, one US dollar would give you 86 um, Jamaican dollars. Mm -hmm. So you go into a store, bread is like $500, and you know, bulla is, which is a, a little pastry, bulla is like maybe $150. So you think about it, it sounds extreme, but again, when you do the exchange rate, it's, I mean, it's still rough, it's still rough. Okay, now we're getting to, getting to, to, a, to an interesting, interesting part. And this is where I think there is, uh, I mean, there, there's a lot of African influence about um, on Jamaica, but in the food in particular, I think this is where you would find a real heavy influence. So we're gonna look at this other jewel of Jamaica, the food. And on your tables, we have some, um, some things passing around. So the first thing, that I want to um, share the national fruit of Jamaica, which is called ackee. And here's a picture of it here. It um, grows on trees and it's in a, a, in a red um, shell. And when it's ripened, the, the, the pod or the shell will open up and you will see these clusters. They have, um, and the, the seeds are, are black. And then the flesh of the fruit is actually a yellow um, consistency, kind of looks like eggs. And you have to be very careful um, with ackee because if you eat it before it is um, not properly ripe or if it's not prepared properly, can be poisonous and can be fatal. Mm -hmm. So it's usually made with codfish or some of you say saltfish, which is a salty uh, actual cod and you can buy pieces of it and usually what folks do is um, they, they soak it so a lot of the salt will come out and then they basically stew it up with onions and pepper, scallion, to have um, with the ackee. And actually have some, because usually it's a, it's a delicacy, when, so when you get it, it's like, ooh, you treasure it. So my aunt brought some back for me, so I'm gonna pass this around. It's cold because it's been frozen, so just so you can get a, 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 a visual of what it looks like. And um, I've had it with that, I mean, I haven't eaten saltfish for years, and so you can have it just by itself with um, other foods that we're gonna we're gonna talk about in a minute. So ackee is the national fruit. Yes, it had, yeah, tofu, <laughs> kind of like an egg, kind of um, you know kind of consistency, but very delicious. Some people, for some, it's a, it's an acquired taste. But again, that is the national fruit. And as you see here on this plate, we're gonna start talking about some of these other things. Um, there's a some boiled dumpling, and there's some yam, which we're gonna talk about in a minute because these are foods that are definitely an integral part of the Jamaican um, diet. So as I mentioned before, heavy African influence when it comes to the food. So yam. So here in America, um, I know that the, the one, one popular dish is candied yams. So if you say to candied yams, most of Jamaicans, I, that's not yam. This is what Jamaicans yeah. know as yam. And this is yellow yam. They have white yam as, as well. And it's basically um, a tuber. So it grow, grows in the ground, you have to dig it up. And they also call this ground provision. And so you may just have this, and I'll pass this one around too. Have this as part of um, your meal. Some people eat that for breakfast, but if, and if you're having a real, real authentic um, Jamaican soup, it's gonna have some ground provision in it. It's gonna have yam, it's gonna have dumpling, it's gonna have other things like chocho. Mm -hmm. and, and this is, is I, I know this is called, um, I think chayote in some other parts of, um, of, of, the, of the world. 
chocho is, is what we call that in Jamaica. So your soup will have all of these, yes, you know, good in, no, no, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you find these. That's um, cha well, he so here they may call it chayote. It's we call it chocho in Jamaica, and you slice it up and it's just boil it and you boil it in the soup. And it has um, it's it's a a, a, a high water content, but it again it adds another element of um, taste to um, to the food. And then another common um, delicacy and again the common part grows right on the trees. Mm -hmm. Everywhere, breadfruit. <laughs> okay, so that is another food that Jamaicans will have, and you can roast it, you can boil it, you can fry it. And usually, what we do um, here in, in the states, we'll, we'll turn light the stove and put the the breadfruit literally right on top of the the burner, so it can roast. And then after it's roasted, you peel it, cut it up, and you can fry it then if you want to. Or some people just have it. Um, just as it is, um, roast breadfruit. And I do that so you can see what it looks like inside. Because okay. again, that's another um, another delicacy. So this is what it looks like on the inside. That's when it's um. And you, so usually when when folks are coming back and forth now, you, there's of course there's certain things you can't bring, um, you know, just freely. So usually what you have to do is maybe cut cut it, do some kind of preparation with it before. You freeze it and then you can pack it in your luggage and bring it back. And again, you can freeze it and then have it to enjoy um, whenever you're ready. And they have um, a lot of the, the Caribbean stores, the markets, they will sell these items. Um, again, you'll, any international market, they'll, they'll have bread food, they'll have um, ackee. Sometimes they sell them in the cans because they know, of course, people are here abroad and they'd love to have um, these items. Then another um, staple which is common for um, breakfast time is cornmeal, the use of cornmeal. So cornmeal porridge is, so there may be, you know, cream of wheat is, is popular here and oatmeal is popular here in Jamaica. A good breakfast may include some cornmeal porridge. And you're basically boil, boiling the cornmeal, adding milk and sweetener, and it's again a good hearty um, breakfast to have. Um, I'm also going to mention, even though it, it's, it's not up here, Another um, distinction in terms of breakfast is Jamaicans will call a lot of different things tea. So when they're saying tea, I have, you know, you have a cup of tea yet? They may be referring to hot cocoa, which is really actually ground up chocolate, or they may be referring to the herb, herbal tea itself. So tea is another important um, breakfast component. Then of course we can't um, leave out the spices. Spices, spices, there's some, some spices that are unique to um, to Jamaica, and I have some going around, or some, okay. And there's some that are used for, um, also throughout um, the islands. Okay, so we have nutmeg, so you may grate up some nutmeg to go into the cornmeal um, porridge. Um, behind um, Prashana there, the sister, she has some pimento. You could pass the pimento around. Mm -hmm. Those are some seeds that are commonly used in Jamaican cooking. And you can open, you can open the, um, okay, open the packs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially the pimento, because I want you definitely want you to get that um, that aroma in. And so the pimento might be added to stews. Um, you can add it to rice and peas, which brings me to one very interesting point, and I claim it. Um, it's another point that dis distinguishes Jamaicans from other um, West Indian um, islands or even West Indian cultures. We are the only culture or country that says that calls rice and peas rice and peas. Everywhere else they say peas and rice. Mm -hmm. They are important point because when you think about it, what's more plentiful in the pot? It's the rice. Mm -hmm. So the rice must come first, so rice and peas. Jamaicans are the only ones that um, make that distinction. We also have a unique set of um, seasonings. Some of you may have had some jerk chicken or jerk, um, let's see, jerk tofu. I've seen that before. And jerk is just basically um, a way of preparing. It's usually meat. There's a, a special blend of spices, hot, um, usually hot spices. And then the meat is usually roasted um, over a big open um, a pit. And um, so jerk is a, a, a common um, spice, jerk seasoning that's used in Jamaican cuisine. 
And of course, you have your scotch bonnet peppers, which are very small um, peppers and are very spicy, very, very hot, but they add a special touch to um, Jamaican meals. And of course, there are some other um, foods. So fruits, so we have mangoes, those are definitely plentiful all over the island, pineapples, bananas, green and yellow. So Jamaica, we, we eat green bananas are usually boiled. So when I mentioned before about the ackee and sawfish, you may have ackee and sawfish and some boiled green banana as part of a meal. And then of course, if you want to let the um, bananas ripen, you can let them ripen and enjoy them as um, the sweet banana. Then we also have soursop, papaya, jackfruit, um, guava, star apple, and a star apple is basically, it's called star, star apple because when you cut it, it has a resemblance of a star on the um, inside. And then we also have the cousin of, of banana, plantain, which is, and you can have this green or, um, like this. Yeah, green or, or yellow as well. <laughs> and the longer you leave it to ripen, so that is a pretty sweet um, plantain there. The green ones you can also fry and you can crush them and they also have a more starchy um, consistent. And then we also have another fruit. I remember my, my grandparents had one of these trees um, in their yard, tamarind. Okay, and this is a fruit and you can, there's some on every um, table and you can feel free to you know, break, break it open and see what it looks like on the inside. It's a fruit with a little fleshy meat and one of the most awesome treats you can have as, as a result of preparing the tamarind <laughs> are um, tamarind balls, okay? And I'm gonna pass these around. And basically what is done is this meat is scooped out and it is rolled in sugar. Sometimes some folks add a little spice to it um, to give it a little extra kick. And as a child, this is whew, an awesome, awesome thing. So I have some here and you, you feel free Especially if you're feeling a little, oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to move through the rest of the morning. Help yourself to um, some tamarind balls. If you want to hold one for later, you can. <laughs> so again, tamarind. Yes, yes. And again, these are things that, again, you can get at the Caribbean markets that are in the areas. Feel free. Try and give it a taste. All right. So... The next jewel of Jamaica that I want us to focus on are the people. And I must say, not being biased, but Jamaicans do have a, 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 a beautiful and special spirit about us. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that as we go through. So this is the Jamaican coat of arms. And the motto of the country is out of many, one people. And that's because that is truly what Jamaica is. It's a mix of many different ethnicities, um, people of different heritages who have come together on this island for different reasons. Um, as early as the 1850s, Jews were coming <coughs> to Jamaica, Chinese were coming to Jamaica, all because they wanted to get an opportunity to work. Many people um, from Cuba came to Jamaica, working on the, on, on, the, on the Panama Canal. And of course, again, being involved in the um, sugarcane um, trade and processing. So here we have Taino Indians, again, the, the first, the very first Jamaicans, reflecting of this wonderful mix of people that we have on the island. So there, you again, you will see, of course, people like us of African descent, you will see Jews with their synagogues, you will see Chinese Buddhist temples, that is all there, and I do have a short clip. Um, I want to make sure that the internet is um, up. Then you also have um, Caucasians. You have Caucasians there, and it is the some you know some children find it's the most hilarious thing to walk up to a white person that are you the brethren, and it's it's like oh, okay. it's, it's more interesting <laughs> from Chinese. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and the Chinese too. It is, it is. Yeah. <laughs> then you also have the East Indians. Um, and Jamaica who make up a good um, percentage of the population as well. So again, Jamaica is truly a, a blend. And I must say in terms of um, the, you know, the racial overtones and the strife, yeah, there may be little squibbles and squabbles here, but most Jamaicans, when they come here, that is when they first have their exposure to, oh, I'm being treated this way because of the color of my skin. So that is something, um, again, it's not perfect there, but there's definitely a whole lot less of the um, racial um, tensions there, yes. 
I mean, uh, the only like, like um, island I've ever been to in that area is Trinidad. And okay. it reminds me of, it's like the exact same makeup mm. as Trinidad. Mm -hmm. The exact same makeup, actually. S sim sim similar people. We are, we are definitely all one. We just got dropped off different, um, you know, different ports. So some famous um, Jamaicans, again, who have made their mark not only on the island but also throughout the world. Um, Harry Belafonte is one. He is um, known as a folk singer. De, me say 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 de, oh. That's Harry Belafonte. Daylight come and me want go home. But he's also, uh, uh, he has also grown from that, and many of you may also know of his, his activism. So he is definitely one who has, um, again, made his mark culturally, but also has worked to, um, to, um, to alleviate the plight of suffering around the world. Then we have Merlene Ati and, of course, um, Usain Bolt, who are well-known track stars, because that is a big deal in Jamaica, track and field sports. So you will find, I mean, the poorest of children when they get home from school or, and they are out racing and trying to develop their speed because if you can get selected for the Jamaican national team and possibly go to the Olympics, you will have, um, you know, done and achieved something great. Usain is actually from um, Trelawney as well, Martha Bray, not too far from, um, from Falmouth where my family is from. So these are, again, some famous Jamaicans and, of course, our... Um, Discussion of Jamaica would not be complete without mentioning, I mean, if you could say one person single-handedly put Jamaica on the map, we would say it is Robert Nesta Marley, a.k.a. Brother Bob, Bob Marley, with his um, promotion of reggae music throughout the world, his um, Rastafarian faith, which is a tribute to basically spreading peace and love. Um, he is definitely one of the, I would say, the, the most famous Jamaicans that is around. And so when I mentioned before the spirit of a people, um, many of you may have heard before years ago in terms of um, the Olympics and, and, and the Jamaican bobsledding team mm -hmm. making mark. Um, and this, you know, this, this team is just a testament to, to what the Jamaican spirit is all about. Because yes, cool running, so and cool running basically means that you know everything is alright, everything is good. But then who would think that some people on a warm tropical island would come to go to, I'm not even sure where they train, Canada, or so go to some freezing cold place to train and to actually participate in a bobsled event. But that is just a testimony to the determination of um, the Jamaican spirit. Again, from brought down from years to years, um, Years ago from, from people like uh, Queen Nanny of the Maroons, that determined spirit, I will not be a slave, I'm going to set out and accomplish something. People like Paul Bogle, again, I will not be you know, treated any less than. So there's that determined spirit that is um, seen around the island. And also in our creativity, one, th one of the things I wanted to um, highlight, yes. Mm -hmm. So just the creativity of, um, of the people. You will see, again, crafts, people around all over um, the island as you drive around to different you know, ports and, and, and tourist attractions, or again, just visiting um, everyday people. This is a photo album that's just made out of banana leaves. And so the creativity of our people, I think I showed before, the Calabash Cup, artists are all around the world, I mean, all over the island. Um, putting their skills, their handiwork to the test to do what they have to do to provide for their families. So this is the spirit of Jamaica, cool runnings, everything is iry, and if they are leaving you, one of the, the common um, expressions you might hear before you left the house is walk good. Walk good, necessarily, you know, not necessarily walk, you know, but be careful, be safe, most high's blessings with you as they would leave and, you know, until you were to um, be in each other's company again. So these are just some of the jewels. Again, we have plenty more, but these are just some of the jewels that I wanted to highlight for our um, focus on for kids and culture this summer. Um, any questions? And I also have a, a, a game for us to play. 
one of the one of the, the, the popular games um, on the island. I want us to get a get a little idea. Let's say I think there's enough of us in here that we can play. While anybody thinks of any questions, anybody anybody f f familiar with these with these objects here? Dominoes. Yeah. So this is one of the favorite pastimes in Jamaica, and I hope all of um, the campers get a chance to at least learn how to play. There's a skill to it. The object of the game is to, to be the first one to, to have no dominoes left. And some, I mean, like my uncles, I mean, they will be play, they will play all night. And if they get, really get into it, you hear them do a oh, yeah. slam down on the table, like, boy, oh, what you think you do? Bam, they, you know, they really into it. Yes. So, but the object is, again, to get out of the game as quickly as possible. And basically, all you're doing is matching up the, um, so you, you end up making a train with the dominoes and you're matching up the pieces. So let's say I put down this three and a six. The only pieces I could play is a piece that has a three on one end or a six on the other end. And, every, and usually folks play with um, partners, so it's usually groups of four. So again, I think we have enough um, people here. I want us to, 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 to give it a go. And you shuffle them and again, try to get out of the game as, um, as quickly as possible. Yes. So I had someone try to teach me. And it was super <laughs> um, but then isn't there another alternative where it's like, I know it can go either um, vertical, but it can also go horizontal. Like one can go in the middle of the two, so you can, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so as long as they're, they're connected, you can work from, from, from different ends. But there must be some connection, and the, the numbers of the pieces must um, must match up. Okay. Yeah. Told me some other weird and again, again, there there is a, de a yeah, definitely a um, skill. Definitely a yeah, skill to it. <laughs> um, but I, I I just know the basic one of okay, this is a two. I'm playing a two. This is a one. Okay, I can I can only play a one. So any questions? Any um any other questions? We can get into some some groups here and just kind of give it a little go. I think we have a few. I have a question up here. Yes. Are there any field trips that you um, know of? Uh, field, um, field trip spots? Yes. Um, yes. So, good question. Um, I know there is a Jamaican embassy here. It's very small. Um, and I'm not sure that they would offer um, anything. I would have to, um, to think, um, think on that. Um, Um, one of the things I also um, forgot to mention in terms of the, 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 the national symbols, that I'm, and that's why I'm just trying to think in terms of the um, field trip. So like the doctor bird, a, a, a particular species of hummingbird that's only found on Jamaica, that is a national um, bird. Okay, so y'all have, y'all have to sit here so y'all can shuffle. How much pieces are you supposed to have? Everybody gets seven. Seven pieces. So you deal them out to each other, kind of like you're dealing, you know, cards. 